Hello, friends. Welcome to Worship Night in the Cabin number five. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about my favorite miracle that Jesus did. And I'll tell you why it's my favorite. I'm going to be doing a couple of original songs, a couple of my favorite originals, and tell you a little bit about the story behind the song. I hope everyone's doing well, healthy, and safe. I want to tell you a little bit about what I've learned about worry because, you know, we, we all worry about things. We all worry about the future and how things are going to turn out. And uh, Some of us are worrying about, you know, finances or relationships, or just things we got to deal with, employment, whatever it is, and we, we will worry. Uh, family, we don't run out of things to worry about. Although Jesus said we shouldn't worry, don't worry. But trust in Him. What I've learned is that uh, the way to stop worrying and to conquer worry is um, the idea of replacing the energy that we have when we worry, the energy it takes to worry. And, and I know that you'll agree with me that um, Worry takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot out of you. It um, burns a lot of calories. Uh, can keep you up at night. Wor there's a worry. It's, it takes a lot of uh, work. Um, but if we can transfer worry energy to trust energy, uh, then then we can alleviate a lot of, of worry. Um, and the sooner the better. The sooner you can take uh, worry and transfer that energy to trust energy, uh, the better off you'll be. So trust energy, meaning, you know, trusting in God, turn it over to God, uh, pray, um, just let God take care of it. So trust that God will, will work things out. And he's able to do that because we have a God who intervenes, who is a real-time God, most of the time we think of the worst case scenarios and uh, don't do that. Don't, don't think of the worst case scenario. Usually it never happens. And don't, don't spend all your energy worrying. Instead, spend your energy, transfer it to prayer and to trusting in, in the Lord. That's what I found. It's a good way to overcome worry. You know, God is a God of love. He's a God of grace. And grace is that good favor by God on those who don't really uh, have a reason to have the favor, the good favor. Uh, so grace is that goodness of God on those who don't deserve the goodness. But, you know, the foundation of all that is love. And God loves us so much that um, it's hard to fathom the, ex the extent of it, that he would even uh, come to earth in the form of a man and die on the cross for us. But I love uh, what Paul uh, writes in Ephesians chapter 3. So I'm going to read it to you, uh, this passage that talks about God's love. This passage is actually a prayer. And it's a prayer from the Apostle Paul to Christians. So it's really to us. And it's a, it's a prayer to you. So listen, listen to this prayer by the Apostle Paul. It's Ephesians chapter 3, and it's verse, uh, verses 16 to 20. And, and uh, it goes like this. Let me get a drink first. <clears throat> it goes like this. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. I love that. I love that term, to grasp 
the extent of his love. His, his love is so wide and long, high, deep. It's hard to grasp it. If we can just get a little bit a hold of that of, and understand a little bit of it. And he continues, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God, that you may be filled to the measure uh, of all the fullness of God, be filled uh, with his spirit. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. I love that passage because it talks about the extent of God's love, but it also talks about that he can do, he is able to do much more than we can even think about or ask about or imagine. And sometimes when you look look back at your life and look at the blessings, which uh, we really need to dwell on, especially in these days, dwell on the blessings that, that God gives us. Uh, we sometimes look back and see, man, he did a lot more than I ever dreamed or, or imagined. That's where I came up with a song that I wrote a long time ago. It's called More Than I Imagined. And it talks about his love and what he's able to do and what he was able to do, still is, and will do. So it goes like this. I have seen your grace seen it fall on me, fall on me, and through Christ in faith, you've given me everything, everything, and you just keep on giving, more and more, more and more, your grace overflows, your love's become more than Oh, 
than I imagined. You know, God is a God of love, and, and uh, there's a miracle that demonstrates the character of God, of Jesus, when he walked on this earth. And I'm going to read this passage. It's probably my favorite miracle, and I'll tell you why in a second. It's my favorite. But let me read first this miracle of Jesus, and it's the miracle at Nain, the city of Nain. It's found in Luke chapter 7, 11 through 15. Let me read it to you. Soon afterward, Jesus went with his disciples to the village of Nain, and a large crowd followed him. You see, by that time, he had been doing miracles. He, had, he was teaching. Uh, all his disciples were following him, along with all, a bunch of other people, a crowd uh, uh, says a large crowd uh, following him and he's, he's going um, toward a, a city called Nain and what's going to happen is this procession of Jesus this you know crowd is going to collide with another crowd that's coming out of the city of Nain now this crowd that's coming out of the city uh, is a funeral procession and there's something really interesting uh, about this uh, funeral. It involves a widow. Now, in the, in the culture back then, in Jesus' time, a widow uh, is in a bad spot. Um, unless the widow has a, a son to take care of her, uh, she's pretty much, you know, it's not, not like today's world uh, where women can uh, work and make a living. Uh, someone has to take care of, of widows. And... Um, this is a situation where um, her husband died, and even further than that, uh, let's read on and I'll, I'll tell you why it's even worse than, uh, than just her husband dying. Uh, verse 12 says, A funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. The, uh, the young man who had died was a widow's only son, and a large crowd from the village was, was with her. So uh, there, a young man died. It was, it was the son of this widow. Uh, so now the widow has no husband to take care of her. And, and the son that should be taking care of her has died. So sh she is crying. She's devastated. Um, and Jesus spots her. So let's see what happens. When the Lord saw her, verse 13, uh, Luke chapter 7, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it. And the bearer stopped. Young man, he said, I tell you, get up. Then the dead boy sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. Wow, can you imagine the scene that's going on there? But the emotion, uh, you know, of the mother totally devastated, then all of a sudden filled with joy. But why I like this, this miracle? It's a miracle that's strictly of compassion. The mother didn't ask for Jesus to do anything. Nobody asked Jesus to do anything. Matter of fact, there wasn't even any faith required here in this miracle. It was strictly out of compassion. Jesus saw the widow crying and, and he solved the, the problem. He raised the boy from dead to life. This is the first time that Jesus raised someone from the dead the boy in this miracle. But it just shows the character of Jesus and of God. Our God is a compassionate God and he has compassion on us even now, even in this you know, virus situation. He, he sees what's going on. And maybe, you know, sometime when we go through all this and it's all behind us and we're going to look back and see God's hand at work and be, a, be amazed at, at what God's done um, and will do in this situation for us. 
Um, sometimes when we go through things like this, we don't, we don't see his hand at work. And, but when we reflect back, we can see God was in the picture all the time. And God was working things out. I believe in the providence of God that, that he uh, can open up doors that we can't, that he, he can intervene for us, that uh, he lines people up with people and situations. And, uh, he lines them up for us. So he, wor he works for the good of those who love him. And he's like the perfect dad who wants the best for his children and even though we might go through the trials, God is still working in our life and still aware of what we're going through. And he's a compassionate God. Um, I wrote a song uh, called, Lord, You Amaze Me. And, and it talks about reflecting back and seeing God's hand at work and how amazing uh, He is in our life. So, this is, Lord, you amaze me. Lord, you amaze me The things you do me as I reflect on you. I've seen your mighty hand in action once again. You amaze me with the depth of your great love. You amaze me with the strength that's from above. The riches of your grace Seems I see it every place around me You amaze me You can open any door You amaze me With the blessings that you pour My faith is here to stay And I never cease to say You amaze me Lord, you amaze me with the way you move. Lord, you amaze me. It just goes to prove your private dance is real. Your presence I can feel. me with the depth of your great love you amaze me with the strength that's from above the riches of your grace seems I see it every place around me yeah yeah you amaze me you can open any door you amaze me with the blessings that you pour my faith is here to stay, and I'll never cease to say, you amaze me. Lord, I praise you. of your grace seems I see it every place around me yeah yeah you amaze me you can open any door you amaze me with the blessings that you pour my faith is here to stay 
I'll never cease to say you amaze me. You amaze me. Yeah. <coughs> so, during these uh, times that we're going through, these strange times, um, don't, don't be in fear, don't be afraid, but trust in God. And uh, look at the blessings that uh, he's given you and he still gives you. Look at the promises. Uh, look at the hope that we have as Christians. And look at what's important. Uh, God's love, family, relationships, people. So try to look on the bright side of things and be safe. And how about let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just praise you and thank you, God. Help us in this situation of the virus that uh, help us that we convert our worry energy into trust energy. Help us to do that and forgive us when we forget to pray and fail to fail to do that. But but help us to overcome uh, worry and instead of uh, all the energy spent on worry, help us to spend that on uh, trusting in you. Uh, Lord, we give you praise. Thank you for <clears throat> this uh this time we had tonight of worshiping you, and we should give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Until next time, uh, be safe. See ya.